Hallo, guten Tag. Ähm, ich werde mich auch an die USA äh, wenden, also daher werde ich auch auf Englisch sprechen. Ich hoffe, ihr könnt äh, mitverfolgen. Okay, I'm going to start by quoting the great Noam Chomsky, who recently said, Now that the extent of the U.S. National Security Agency surveillance programs are well aware in the public sphere, it is beholden on the public to fight back or find themselves complicit in these activities. Edward Snowden's act of blowing the whistle had extraordinary implications for all of us. These leaks, according to Edward Snowden himself, pose the greatest human rights challenge of our time. By revealing that the objective of the NSA is the elimination of global privacy for all citizens everywhere. By collecting, storing, analyzing every form of human communications of citizens everywhere. Well, knowledge is power, and thanks to Ed Snowden, we have been emboldened by this knowledge to challenge the existence of the deep, dark state within the state that has powers that no state ever had. We need to rise up to this occasion and defend our civic protections by speaking truth to power, by revealing truth as power, and not remain silent under the chill of self-censorship. The Obama administration has been engaged in a brutal and unrelenting crackdown targeting and persecuting whistleblowers, journalists, and activists in government retaliation in order to suppress dissent and free speech and discourage future truth tellers from coming out. I don't remember exactly who it was who recently said, but fearlessness can be its own form of power. And this is our last chance to stop an unprecedented penetration of the state in areas which absolutely need to be regarded as private and off limits. Some of the most significant journalists, dissenters, and finest minds of our time are either political exiles, political prisoners, or targets for criminal investigations by the state. A handful of them now live in Berlin because it's not safe for them to live in the US or in the UK. 2013 was rife with examples of the total subversion of the judicial system in the U.S. It began with the fatal death of the internet luminary Aaron Swartz, the morally offensive conviction of CIA whistleblower John Kiriakou, the CFAA conviction of Weave, the unprecedented wiretappings against journalists. and other press outlets, the attacks on the press, such as in the case of journalist Barrett Brown, the Espionage Act charges brought against Pulitzer Prize winner James Risen, who reported on the Bush administration's warrantless domestic wiretapping program. We had the ignoble political court-martial show trial of the WikiLeaks whistleblower Private Manning. And just last week, we had the conviction of Jeremy Hammond in the most recent witch hunt against free speech activists. We've had the cases of political harassment and surveillance of journalists such as Glenn Greenwald and David Miranda and the cast iron club of the utterly surveilled Laura Poitras and Jacob Applebaum, all of which are effectively living in exile. We saw the unprecedented manhunt for the whistleblower Edward Snowden, which violated the Vienna Conventions in Vienna. There was the very mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of the investigative reporter Michael Hastings. And if it were not enough, there's the ongoing, unprecedented secret grand jury investigation into the WikiLeaks organization, where a secret jury has been convened specifically to consider whether to approve the prosecution of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks while an unlawful financial blockade has been in effect for the last three years. We've had the case of Sarah Harrison of WikiLeaks, who was advised not to return to the UK. Is this not enough? Did President Obama lie to the US people on August the 6th this year on TV about the NSA scandal when he said, there is no spying happening going on on Americans and there are no domestic spying programs? Did he lie to the German public while here in Berlin when he denied that there are unmanned weaponized drone mission operations being orchestrated from German soil, according to the latest revelations in the Süddeutsche Zeitung? 
So, how come that nobody gets impeached or gets fired? Or Keith Alexander or James Clapper have so brazenly lied to Congress and to the world on these programs? Or here in Germany, what about the interior minister or the BND or perhaps the chancellor herself? Can we expect any political consequences at all? The dirty secret wars have now engulfed Germany too. Shit. Sorry. It is an encouraging thought to know that just a couple hundred meters away, the Lawyers Association was out today in their robes in front of Parliament, manifesting their outrage at secret contractual agreements and the collaboration with the NSA on dragnet surveillance programs that utterly compromise and subvert the rule of law here in Germany. The NSA has operated in total secrecy for decades and covertly afforded itself the right to hoover the internet, to make profiles on people, to put them on lists that will prevent them from attending certain schools or positions in public office, or put them on no-fly lists, or worse, on presidential kill lists, or perhaps be made a target of a killer robot. These are not acceptable methods for an administration that purported to be the most transparent in US history. Nor is it acceptable that Germany be complicit or cooperative in such programs. The worldwide reign of terror and secrecy must now be publicly contained by citizens like you and me everywhere. These grave, this grave digression may have led a non-warring country such as Germany into becoming a vassal state where allegedly indiscriminate lawful surveillance, kidnappings, renditions, torture and lethal drone attacks are being orchestrated. We are collectively faced with the necessity now to plot the end of the to turnkey totalitarian state, and they're not going to do it for us. I argue that there has not been a precedent in history where so much surveillance and power has not been abused by the state. It's been very well embodied in the internal NSA slogan, we track them, you whack them. I think everyone needs to know and understand how all these agencies, the BND, the GCHQ, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and the long shit list of other agencies that are using these secret programs to target people politically for blackmail, for prosecution, for torture, for potentially launching drone attacks, or to engage in industrial espionage, or to spy on an entire political class, such as in Germany, or most recently for diplomats in their hotels. We are demanding political consequences now, in Germany, in the US, for the government officials and the corporations who allowed for these bad certificates and for these back doors the publicly elected officials who commit mass human rights violations should be held to account and prosecuted. Edward Snowden was stripped of his citizenship and indicted on charges of espionage as leaks of classified information to the press. Sound familiar? Yes, it's part of the draconian sentences being dished out to anyone speaking truth to power. For blowing the whistle on war crimes, for posting a hyperlink, for for having published information that is of vital public interest. All of these cases are related and they all essentially tell similar stories of exposing gross contempt of law, of fraud, of waste and corruption. The US gives freedom and democracy a bad name. Up until recently, the US political debate was all around Amer Americans and their rights. But the rights of non-US citizens simply have been non-existence in this context. There is no difference anymore between corporations and governments, surveillance at this point. So it's up to you to make informed choices concerning your data. They maximize the power with all their might to build this surveillance state. But it could only come into being because it was held in total secrecy. But it's not secret anymore. And we're not going to let up on the noise. Let us all get together and inspired and devise technological tools and strategies to circumvent the surveillance apparatus. We are going to make it as hard as possible for them to operate effectively through ongoing unmanageable global scandals and leaks and keep on exposing their illegal doings by, by informing the world citizenry. We're going to make public awareness programs for young and old alike so we can devise a new social contract because the one that we have now is irrevocably broken. 
We are going to encourage free hardware and free software movements to escape the back doors built in bad propriety products and services. We are going to organize somehow against the cyber militarization of the internet. We are going to take it back, somehow. The internet was some, one of the greatest inventions of mankind. It cannot be subverted as a tool to get us all arrested and put future generations at risk. The conspiracy of the five eyes and their allies has made the world a safer, less safer place. It must stop, now. It has only perpetuated more terror and undermined the fundamental trust in law, in the internet, and the democratic nation state. We need to move into the resistant phase now and rein in surveillance by demanding public oversight and judicial review. To the MPs in the German Bundestag, I say, we are in Germany, a free and democratic country, and we've become, if not the most spied upon, the most monitored, the most surveilled society that there has ever been. And it is up to you, to public, as publicly elected officials, to demand structural transparency and consequences. Freedoms of the press, of the speech, of, and strong guarantees for private communications must be upheld in order to inform citizens for the sake of a broad debate to influence policy making in order to move forward. Please allow for a greater, greater public participation in the policy making. Let the people have their say. They want to be heard and they're saying loud and clear, stop watching us. Make common sense and justice prevail. Thank you very much.